Welcome to our third update on the AMAD24 mission, uh, the Analog Mars mission taking place in Armenia. I'm joined again by our flight director, Reinhard Lustos. So Reinhard, can you give us an idea of uh, what happened since our last update? What are the analog astronauts about? Mm -hmm. I think one of the most exciting updates, uh, at least from the analog astronauts for them, is that we had the first harvest on in the, the greenhouse that we have on Mars, the Hort 3 uh, space uh, greenhouse. So they were putting microgreens there that can grow within a few days. And yesterday they harvested them and as far as we heard also ate them and were quite happy. <laughs> that sounds incredibly exciting uh, and very much Mars-like uh, because being able to grow the own food, of course, will be instrumental on a Mars mission. That brings me to a different question. What do the analog astronauts usually eat? Do they have the, this astronaut food in like plastic tubes or what, what uh, do they enjoy? No, so they don't eat uh, typical astronaut food, but they eat uh, prepared meals that are, most of them are frozen. They also have uh, some bread and, and uh, other things. So it's basically what you would eat at home if you are in a rush, in a hurry, and you don't have enough time to cook. But they do also cook, um, especially on the black days when they have, uh, on, the, on the days where they don't, when, on the break days, basically, when they don't have a fixed schedule. And then they can take the time to enjoy the process of cooking and then eating a self homemade meal. And uh, that's what they do then. But normally during mission days, it's all a bit hectic. They don't have so much time. So it's a uh, pre-made meals that are just heated up. Okay, so the first harvest, um, that's uh, really exciting. Uh, talking about harvests, maybe in a more uh, not literal sense, uh, what else was achieved this uh, over the last couple of days? So in the last uh, days, we had again uh, several EVAs, extravehicular activities, uh, where the analog astronauts went outside in the suits. And uh, most of the time we spend around the habitat because this is also the most accessible area. But for example, yesterday and also today, there's an EVA ongoing where they go to another region of interest. Uh, we called it the Donau, the Danube interest area. Uh, it has nothing to do with the Donau, it's just a name that we gave it. Uh, because this is also a very interesting area geologically. So our geologists and also the analog astronauts were very happy to go to this region. It's about one and a half kilometers of traverse. So they have to go there uh, with uh, motorized vehicles, with quad bikes, uh, to do some sampling there. So they did the GEOS experiment and took some soil samples in the Donau region. And that was very exciting for everybody. Um, you talked about the traverse that they had to do. Uh, can you talk a little about what goes into planning? Is it as easy as if we just say, well, I drive my bike a little or what, what goes into the planning? Uh, it's, it's a bit more complicated than that. So you can't just use uh, popular map software and just say go from A to B because uh, these roads are not in the system. So what our team here did is they put everything into a geo software that can process map data, put the roads and the, the pathways there, analyzed uh, what kind of terrain is this, how long would it take to walk, to go by quad bike and so on. Also considering how steep and how, how slow they have to go in some areas because it might be more dangerous, so they go slower or if they can go faster if it's open ground. So all of these things are considered into making a traverse plan where we very precisely tell the analog astronauts, you are here, these are your GPS coordinates, you need to go there, and this is the exact way we propose you to go. And then of course the analog astronauts, they have to use their senses. So if they see a change in the terrain, yeah, they of course can adapt. But in principle, it, it would take a few hours uh, for each traverse to be generated for each traverse plan. So it's uh, a bit more complicated than just using an app on your phone. Indeed, it sounds much more complicated. So you've talked a, a bit about outdoor activities now. Has there been anything interesting going on indoors in the habitat as well? Mm -hmm. Yes, so they also continue with indoor experiments and they also have 
indoor days so where they do uh, where there's a non eba day where they don't go outside and they have been conducting for example the staying alive experiment where they simulate a, a bioreactor for oxygen production and where they simulate certain um, maintenance procedures and also emergency procedures uh, with the help of an ai so that's that's quite uh, interesting also in that sense um, and there were also many other experiments, like almost every day they have to fill out a questionnaire about uh, their mental well-being at the end of the day. It's, it's a bit like a diary at the end of the day. So, yeah, this is something they continuously do until quite late in the day. So our analog astronauts are busy from getting up in the morning to going to bed in the evening. Okay. Um... Anything else uh, that might be interesting for our viewers, or shall we move on to the next update and when it takes place? Well, we got a weather report uh, for, for Mars, and uh, the next days the weather is going to be splendid, sunshine all day. So this is also perfect for us, of course, because then we can also do a lot of EVAs and uh, explore the region a bit more before the mission ends. That sounds wonderful. So um, let's move on. Our next update will take place on the 2nd of April, a new month, and at a different time. Uh, it will be at uh, 10 o'clock in the morning, Central European time. So uh, thank you very much for tuning in today. Uh, we hope you'll join us for our next update. And thank you for, for the update, Reinhard. Thank you very much. You're welcome.